Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Now, in our last episode of our Getting Into Nullsec series, we looked at ships to train for, like, to start out. Now, these are going to be ships that have a little more specific roles. Uh, we're going over destroyers and cruisers and such forth things. Uh, these have a little more specific roles and what they play and fleet warfare and alliance kind of PvP and such things. Now, the first ships we're going to go over is the advanced destroyers. We're going to stick in here in the T2s still. Uh, we'll get the Heretic, because it's the Amar. I mean, there's other ones. There's the Flycatcher, the Ares, the Saber. But we're looking over the Heretic just because it's an Amar character. All the requirements are generally the same, exempting the faction, uh, exempting the racial destroyer skill. All right. As you can see, a little bit longer. Like, we're looking at the frigates, and they're like, eh, 20, 22 days, something like that. These are 40 days. <laughs> you could just train for these, and you could just go, but then... You're also dealing with more expensive ship. This is a 34 million esque ship as opposed to a 20 million esque ship. Um, so you're looking at 15, just 15 more just for the hull, let alone the fit, which would be, like I said, 10, 15, maybe even more. Uh, on top of that, you could easily probably, if you really want to, you could probably for like 2 million esque, but you're going to die because you didn't put a good enough fit on it. It could be a decent fit, it could not necessarily be good enough fit. You might not necessarily die, but you could have put a better fit on it. Um, and the difference between a good fit and a great fit could be life and death. So, and also, it's the ESC. I mean, there's lots of factors that go into exactly how you fit your ship. But, so, according to this, this starts, there's another level of ships up in the cruiser section for these. These are just called interdictors. Now, what they do is they can fit an interdiction sphere launcher. They can put up a warp bubble. that They, they, they carry a little launcher with them, and it shoots out the little warp, pro, warp sphere, interdiction sphere probe. And it goes out and it creates a bubble of a certain size. And you can't warp out of it unless you're an interceptor or you're a T3 with the interdiction nullified subsystem. Everything else is stuck. Very nice. Also, if you have any friends, oh, this is a funny story from uh, my brother who also plays this game. Uh, the Titan pilots. Titans are great and glorious ships. Let's go look at one because they're really pretty. Okay. So I'll pop one up so you guys can see it. We'll just say it was this one. We'll just say it was the Avatar. Oh, it's huge. We'll make it big. Make it really big. Oh, it's massive. It's giant. It is 13 kilometers long. And it takes half a year to be able to sit in it. Or half a year to two thirds of you have another character who just started doing that. So, just to sit in it. And it takes up to like three years to fly perfectly. And it's just the skills, let alone the billions of isk of skills. And like this, you know, the 50, 60, 70, even 80 or plus billion is call, depending on how you get it. So, if they have buddies who fly these, and there's people in the game who fly that, so that's kind of given. But they use them for certain purposes. They have a jump bridge capability, they can shoot ships. The, the Alliance has a use for them. And whenever there's a fleet with interdictors or hicks, which are heavy interdictors, as Cruiser will talk about that in here in a second, they don't like you to get close to them. They have usually have alts, so they have they're flying more than one character at a time. And he says, if you get within, I think it was like someone said, if you get within 50 kilometers of me, I'm gonna pop you. You're done. You just no, just stay very far away from me. You can get anywhere near me. <laughs> the ships are expensive. I mean, the last quoted figure I was hearing um, was three thousand dollars for one of these ships. If you were to pay cash for them on the internet, and that's uh, that's that's money. <laughs> And getting that much billion isk, I mean, that's that's crazy, too. Um, it's something almost anyone could do. I mean, it just takes time. It depends on how you want to try to get your isk or how you want to get your money. I mean, you can go ahead and save up for, you know, most of a year on minimum wage in order to get that much money. <laughs> Working, you know, full weeks. So, we will see. Anywho, we're going to go back to the Interceptors, even though Titans are great fun. We'll talk about capital ships later. Uh, back to the Interdictors. Uh, Heretic, like I said, 40 days. Uh, something you'll see here. I've asked. Virus no. database has been updated. No, you haven't. Okay. Anywho, I am now protected from all kinds of viruses. Okay, so I'm protected from some viruses. <laughs> but it's free. Nobody cares. Okay. So, now we're looking at uh, Graviton fixes Physics, which is specifically geared towards the Interdictors and the Hicks. Um, science level 5 something you need eventually. Power Grid Management level 5 is a good idea. I mean, you're needed for this ship. The Destroyer 5 is something that's it's only going to get you interdictors. That's the only reason you're going to be able to use it. Propulsion Jamming Level 5, I mean, interdictors and propulsion jamming are you need for Hicks as well. 
uh, which are a little bit more expensive ship. Now you know, just maybe, just maybe like a digit. Um, so we'll look at those here in a second. These, like I said, 34 million is they're gonna take 40 days to train. And if it's something you want to do, these are like one. These are starting to get towards the very. Uh, uh, they're like a bigger interceptor as far as they tackle. You get to somewhere and you put up a bubble and no one can leave, including your team too. So that's that's strategy. That's chess acting like stuff going on there in Eve, which is crazy. Anywho, so that's our interdictors for you. Looking at like 40, 45, between 40 and 45 days of train, um, and that's what they do. They are the uh, a primary tackle ship. That's their almost entire job is to tackle something, is to get to somebody and make it so they can't leave. So other ships can kill them. Otherwise, they would just leave. So we're going to go into cruisers. Tech 2, there are five different types of Tech 2 cruisers. The most of any of them, uh, of any of the ship classes, and battleships only have two. When you get in here, they got Black Ops and Martyrs, which we'll get to. Battle cruisers only have one, command ships. We so we're just going to go down the list here. Hacks. These things are like assault frigates, except cruiser size. They put out a lot of damage. <laughs> And they're they're still kind of like glass cannons, but they're not so much glass cannons because they are capable. They they're big enough to have a small to have a tank, but they're still totally geared towards blowing something up. Now, what you would do in a fleet for an alliance is is you would send out your interdictor, um, or you send out an interceptor to stop somebody. You'd bring an interdictor on a gate for a gate camp or something like that, and you toss up a bubble. And there'd be hacks waiting, and their entire job. The interdictor's job is to make it so the target can't just leave. It makes it so they can, like, even if they stop and they put on stasis swivel fires, they stop them so they can't, so they can barely fly at any speed. They can't warp away. They can't get away at all. And the hacks, is, their job is to just shoot it until it blows up. And they're really, really good at that. That's what they're for. Now, the training here goes up higher. 56 days to sit in one. That is not including the guns. That is not including the modules you'll be needing. A Mark Cruiser 5. Uh, the cruiser to five is probably a pretty good idea. Uh, not necessarily so much using fleet stuff, but you get access to all five of these tiers, which you a lot closer to that. Uh, as you see, again, we have electronic grid upgrades to five. Um, well, having weapon upgrades to five, I can't remember if that was a requirement for. I don't think it was a requirement for assault frigates. Anyway, spatial command to five. We're gonna weapon upgrades to five. Capacitor management to four, uh, which really isn't too bad. It's only two days. And here we're going to start looking at what do the skills cost. This is a 32 million is skill. That kind of makes sense because it is a, you know, 150, 150, 200 million isk ship. These are not cheap. Um, these can be used for mission running as well since they're DPS. That's what they do. They're not necessarily geared solely for PvP, but they do have a place there. So, as I said, you're looking at like 56 days. These are the skills you're looking at. You guys can look at these in game. Uh, now we're going to move on to the Hicks. The Mars Hick is the Devoter. You have Usually for like Hicks, for inter interdictors, you want to know the names of all of them. Just have them in your head. Uh, a browser, uh, if you ever see one on your overview, you'd be like, that is a Hick. I need to not be here right now. So, and you know, if it's a neutral or a hostile, like a proven hostile ship. So, Devoter is what we got for a Hick, a Namar Hick. Now, propulsion jamming five. You see that again. That's what came, that's what came from the last one. If you have interdictors, this isn't too bad of a terrain. Uh, you'll already have power grid management to five. You already have si uh, science level five. Uh, your graviton physics will already be a level one at least. Um, then you need to be looking at going to level four in order to be able to fly a hick. Yeah, your propulsion jamming will be to five just as it should be. Um, and then you'll be looking at the big one. You'll be looking at is cruiser to five and spaceship command to five spaceship command to five is only like a five day train five six day train but the cruiser to five is going to be looking closer towards a month uh, just shy of it but it will be looking to like three and a half weeks uh, propulsion jamming like I said you already have and the hex skill is like 32 million uh, let's double check that uh, we checked the other one 32 yep 32 million so they're expensive and this, you saw the ship itself is 268 million isk these are not cheap these are tech two there's a huge market for tech two they said they're a very specific built purpose. They're very expensive to build, so expensive to buy. They're time intensive to train, but they do a job and they do it very well. And there are some jobs they do that no other ships can really do at all. Uh, the interdictors and the hicks are the only ones who can put up, uh, shoot interdiction spheres. Otherwise, you'd have to anchor a bubble, uh, which is possible with any ship that can fit in its cargo bay. So now we're looking into logistics. This is 
like an only PvP geared thing. You could do it in missions, you're running missions with people, but all this thing does is repair other ships. Um, specifically for the Guardian, we'll look at all the logistics, kind of give you guys, tell, tell what they do. There's, like, there's a spot, every ship fills a certain niche in EVE. Uh, whether that niche really needs filling determines, you know, whether or not that ship really gets flown around a lot. Um, the Guardian. Uh, it is, it is a cap transfer and armor. It, it repairs your armor and it'll give you capacitor. Uh, that's what the Logi functions it does. Uh, the Kaldari will give you... Uh, capacitor and shield boost. Um, let's see. The Galante is armor and sensor booster. Okay, I don't know. The Neros put out sensor boosters. And here, here's the Mimitar is a shield boost and what is this? And sensor boost. I think they changed those. That's funky. Anywho, so we have, uh, sensor boost and shield boost. We have armor boost and shield boost. I mean, armor boost and sensor boost. And they get to the Caldari, which is capacitor and shield, and the Mar, which is capacitor and armor. Now these ships are pushing 180, sometimes a little higher, 150, 163, 163. You're still you're looking at a pretty expensive ship. Let's look at training them. What do we need to do to train these things? You need long range targeting, targeting five, signature analysis to five, logistics level one, and again the Mar cruiser level five, which will be a common between all five of these. Um, that'll be a necessity to get any of the Tech 2 cruisers. Now, so what's was, was this logistics? We're looking at 43 days. That's not, that's really, compared to the other ones, that's really not bad. Uh, logistics skill, 28 million. A little bit cheaper, not much. Uh, ships are also, you know, head out on the cheaper side too, uh, as far as the Tech 2 cruisers have gone so far. But their job, the entire job is they are really good at repairing other ships. They do have a place, uh, especially in fleet ops. Small, uh, solo, never. You'll never want to be in a Guardian solo. A uh, log logistical ship, unless you have a really fancy plan for how to blow someone up and make them think you're not ready to blow them up in a logistics ship. There's a place for that. <laughs> There's not many people who attempt to do that, but I know there is a couple people who will attempt to do that. So, it is a small game, maybe. I mean, the Augur, uh is the Tech 1 version of the Guardian. Let's go down and have a peek at it quick. Also gets bonuses towards remote armor repair and capacitor transfer. It is a lot better. I mean, it's a lot cheaper. You can see it's 10 million. This is like 100. What? What was the other one? 160. So 16 times, uh, one sixteenth of the price. Uh, it doesn't get. It doesn't do the same. It does the same job, but it doesn't do it nearly as well. Um, like I said, it's a lot cheaper though. So and you can fly that fairly easy. The skills con uh, concerning the modules. Uh, what you're really gonna be worried about the remote armor repair skill, um, capacitor skills to get you and the capacitor mission skill, which will really help. Anywho, we can talk about that a little more specifically if we ever go in and talk about logistics. So, jump off the standard cruisers. We're done with logistics. We'll go to recon ships. This is one of the biggest ships. Uh, I still am not 100% sure the Black Ops can. This is the next ship up that can fit a covert ops cloaking device. Uh, the Pilgrim specifically, anyway. Uh, the Curse cannot. So we'll talk about the Pilgrim. It has a little bit... Uh, the, it's both of them are looking very much. This is a drone boat. It is PvP drone boat. Giving it's PvP because tracking disruptor effectiveness, energy vampire, and energy neutralizer. Um, that's destroying someone's capacitor and using drones to kill them. That's what that ship will be geared for. That sounds a little bit like a solo PvP kind of gearing. Uh, this one is very close to that. Um, per skill level is 20% reduction in cloaking device CPU requirement for recon ships. Armor ships is tracking disruptor and drone. This also very. This looks like a cloaky camper. So what you do is you get in this ship, you turn on your cloak, and you sit in a system and just wait. And you sit there and scan or something like that, and wait for a, a prime piece of steak that is somebody running around in a really fancy ship that is not prepared for you to come and try to kill them. So you'd wait for them to like go into a belt or like an anomaly or something like that, and the rats are attacking them, and they can tank it. They're fine. They know what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. But then you go in and add your DPS in, and you blow them up. Now, the cloaky part being is you can just sit in system and no one knows what ship you're in. They don't know what you're capable of doing. You could be in a little tiny ship that doesn't even have a covert cloaking ops. You warped somewhere and just sat there and cloaked and did nothing. And you're just there to be annoying. Just so people don't feel safe. Now, something like this, you could be in there, you could warp to them, you could approach them and like poke, almost poke them in the back with a 2,500 meter long stick, which is not far on Eve. And you'd be like, hi, I'm here, and no one knows you were there until you poke them and go, hi, with your... You know, drones. Yeah. With guns. Yeah. 
That's this game. Anywho, 156 million isk. Well, we got to train for it. Electronic upgrades to five. That's similar to the interceptors. Uh, the interceptor in order to cloak, you need the cloaking skill. Let's be CPU management to four. Uh, similar with the rest, most of the rest of the Tech 2 cruisers, you need spaceship command to five. Uh, similar with all of them, you're going to need your racial faction cruiser to five. Uh, fiving skills is usually used for Tech 2 things. Uh, no Tech 1 things. Oh, sorry, no. Most Tech 1 things do not require any fived skills until you get a little bit higher up in, up in ships, such as capitals. Um, signature analysis to five is going to be a little bit. It's not a long train, it's only a one time skill, so it's only going to take you five days, five, six days. Spatial command, same way, five, six days at most. Uh, CPU management, uh, like I said, the cloaking is something you're going to need for your cloaking device. Uh, the stealth bomber, it wasn't a requirement for it, but you're going to need it. So, that is those. We're looking at 55 days. Uh, the logistics was the closest. Um, this is up there with the hack and the hit, the hacks and the hicks. Um, using the acronyms there on those. These take a while to train, and they take a while to learn to fly. So it's going to be a while, but they do serve a very specific purpose, um, and they do it very well. So hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. We're going to take a look into strategic cruisers. a little more complicated. They're very capable in many ways for many different jobs due to the subsystem structure of their design. Uh, you can... It's like you can build portions of the ship in and change them out, and it's it's really, they can be used for so much. And do not be deceived, uh, 150 million isk is for the ship itself. You still need five subsystems, which run quite a bit as well. Uh, we'll look into those, we'll also look into battleships in our next episode. Thank you guys for stopping in, and you guys have a great rest of your day.